What's up guys? Welcome to phase two of three phases of installing a sound system into a 2023 Hyundai Ioniq 6. Um, if you've not seen my other videos, I encourage you to take a look. Make sure you subscribe and like the videos if you do like them. Um, so phase one consisted of basically installing door speakers, which are in the eight pillars for the tweeters, uh, the front door speakers, and the rear door speakers. Phase two will be installing this amplifier, which is a Rockford Fosgate. Um, T400X4D. This is going to be a start of show. Um, <clears throat> this particular amp should do, well not should, but it will do um, at least 100 watts per channel at either, and it is 4 ohm and 2 ohm stable. So you won't have any issues with this. It's very efficient, pulls, uh, does not pull very much power. The next very important item, which is going to be an integration harness, integration T harness. This will allow us to basically intercept and inject um, the uh, speaker signal or the audio signal coming from the factory infotainment unit and then amplify it to the outgoing speakers. Now this is not vehicle specific for this but it looks like um, standard Hyundai plugs and that's what I observed. I'll have to double check all the pinning before we actually use it and if that doesn't work I do have a backup which hopefully I really don't want to have to do but hey it's here just in case I need it. We got some power distribution blocks and fuses. Uh, phase three will consist of installing a subwoofer. There potentially may be a phase four if I really feel the need for a some type of EQing outside of the factory system and what this amplifier can do. Next, what we have is going to be the audio cable or wiring weather. So this is gonna be a nine conductor wire. There'll be two runs of this. This will be one coming from the infotainment unit providing the signal to the amplifier and then there will be another run coming from the output of the amplifier going into the speakers. Um, this will help simplify things because everything is in one cable. Next we get some new concepts and that's the same brand for the wire distribution blocks and the fusing. This is their 4 gauge Colossus wiring. Um, it's actually quite oversized. This is actual oxygen, oxygen free copper, so this is the good stuff. I usually just buy directly from the foot from them. And then I have some A gauge here that will be going to the amplifiers. Um, on the right hand side here, let me just move this out of the way. I just basically have some install accessories. Um, we got some shrink tubing, some wire ferrules, which is like my new favorite thing now, um, some nuts and bolts. Then I have just my typical tools over here that I would use, my multimeter, some solder, um, my favorite wire crimpers in the world, which will give you nice kind of factory looking crimps and make them super solid, the way you don't have to worry about it. And then we also have some expandable braided sleeve, which will serve as an indication of which is power for the power wiring and just to kind of make everything look neat and tidy. My goal when installing any audio system is to make it look as OEM as possible. Um, if it doesn't look only impossible, it's going to raise a lot more eyebrows whenever, you need, whenever the vehicle needs service. Um, and then even this, this, this background is actually not a background. This is just some quarter inch um, ABS plastic and that will provide us a way to mount the amp and essentially be an amp rack. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So the first thing you should always do when you're working on a vehicle is disconnect the, uh, the battery. So we're going to be doing that. In this particular case, I know this is an electric vehicle, but if you don't know the difference between it, you probably shouldn't be working on it, but we, we, we are going to be disconnecting disconnecting the 12 volt battery, not the high voltage battery. So uh, let's do that. So what I like to do is put a rag or something very insulating around the, the battery terminal. Make sure your car is unlocked before you do this, otherwise it's going to be a pain to get back in. Let's put that there. I am going to disconnect the positive one, but it's just going to be easier. Um, I'm going to get this battery tray out of the way first, so let's do that.
it's that simple. Oh, it is that simple. Uh, there is a wiring harness right here. Okay. There's the wiring harness I was talking about right there. There you go. And this is the tray. Oops, sorry camera. Gonna sit this out of the way. Definitely looks a little intimidating, I got him I, I must say. Um okay. So now we can undo the positive cable a little easier. Wrap that up. Put it away. So that's uh, that's it so far. Now let's take a look. I'm gonna look at something really quick. I'm gonna set my screws for that trunk liner. So I've done a little preliminary research, and I'm most likely gonna run my power wire. There seems to be a grommet. Let's see if I can get a light on it. Right there. If you guys can see that. Right there. Still a tough angle. I'm probably going to have to move the uh, brake fluid reservoir out of the way. I probably won't have to unhook it, but I'll still have to move it out of the way. Also, if you want to replace your cabin air filter, you got to take out the trunk to do that, but it's right there. This gives you a good visual of everything under the hood. Okay, so now that the battery is on hook, I'm going to be removing the rear bottom seat cushion. And the reason for that is that is where uh, the amplifier is going to go. That's where the factory one goes. There's a ton of room. So I'm going to remove that. Now, personally, because I don't like to be curled up in the back of a car, I always start with the amp rack and all of the associated wiring and then just run wires for it. I find that to be the easiest way for me, whatever way works for you. Um, you can do it. So first things first, we're going to remove the seat. So the way you do that is, A, you're going to lift up on that, and then you're going to push it back, and you should feel the, it, it should kind of unclip from the back. you got to do that on both sides. Again, push forward, lift up, there we go. So in the interest of time savings, I'm not going to show putting a lot of stuff back because obviously it's just the opposite of install and I don't want this to be a three hour video. Take this, put it away, away. let's go mobile here. As you can see, there is a ton of room underneath there. So we're going to get this seat base frame out of here, and then uh, we're going to keep chugging forward. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to be taking out the bolts for this seat frame here. Um, you need a 12 millimeter. I'm just going to do that now. And it's not as tight as I thought it would be. Take these out. Okay, um, 
I thought I had to pull this whole piece off. Really, you just need to move the uh, this bottom piece enough so you can get at the screws behind here. So, and then I repeat the same process on the other side. There is a plastic clip in the middle here. Got to remove that, and this gives you access to the front screws here. So let's keep chugging along. All the screws are the same size. There's no uh, Loctite, so you don't need to keep too much care about it. So that should be it. You should now be able, yep, to lift that right up. Oh, be very careful. Don't want to scratch the car. Perfect. So, go mobile here. As you can see, there's plenty of room of activities. Um, there's more on the passenger side. I'm sorry, there's more room on the driver's side than there is on the uh, on the passenger side because there's a secondary module over here. The cool thing is, I already checked this out, there's some mounts that we can utilize too. So this is where the amp's going to live. So what I'm going to do now is, is uh, I'm going to make a template for this area for my amp to sit, and then, uh, yeah, that'll be it. Okay, so I've made our cardboard template, and it's going to sit just in here. We're going to use those factory bolt holes, and there you go. About perfect. So I'm going to transfer this to the ABS, cut it out, and then uh, we'll move forward from there. Okay, so got done with the template. That's what it looks like. Um, this side faces the back of the front seat, and this faces the back of the car. So there you go. I've decided to mount the amp. Okay, so, uh, yeah, that happened. Unfortunately, I was having some technical difficulties, and uh, the camera battery was so low that I could not put it on a charger and film. I wanted to give you guys a time lapse, um, and it was getting pretty late, so I just finished this up last night, but I'll give you guys a quick rundown of what's going on here. So, we got our main 4-gauge wire in. We have 8 gauge going out to the amplifier, um, and then we got our we got our main ground and 4 gauge coming in, and then we have 8 gauge going out to the amplifier. Everything is properly secured, um, so yeah, it's a it's a pretty good setup here. Uh, we got our 
uh, speaker wire going out as you can see crosses over and I only let it cross over where there's shielding so there's obviously no shielding in this portion here crosses over the ground comes out over here you can go to the front of the car um, same thing in this is our, our high um, high signal input coming in from the radio into the amplifier to feed it and um, that's pretty much it got a little dusty um, as you can see I also took the time to make some quick little pigtails I don't even want to call these pigtails but um, this is going to be for phase 3 for the amplifier so make sure if you're going to do that um, you put that there, especially if you're not doing it all at once like me. Um, and then obviously I got two distribution blocks, one for power, and it's going to be fused on both sides. Um, and that's why you got to set up here. So I have two additional outputs for the subwoofer that will be coming later. So yeah, um, what I'm going to do is whatever ends up, whatever I end up needing to do for the T harness, I'll time lapse that so you guys can see some of my halfway decent soldering skills but this is what the amp board is going to look like so far okay so I'm really failing with my camera skills today uh, I had too many files so the last file I just created was too long to save but um, yeah so so here's the amp in place here and sorry it's a little dark I'm in the garage no sunroof very little light in here and I don't have a beam light but the amp plate is secured to the floor. Um, as you notice, there's, there's nuts around the perimeter. Um, those were factory in the floor. I did not add those. So all I did was put some, a couple washers, about three washers, to space it up a little bit and then bolted the amp plate directly to that. Everything is routed neatly. I got my power wire here. Power wire here. Hold on one sec. So I got my power wire routed here. It landed just where I wanted it to land. Get on my speaker wire. Uh, it neatly uh, goes down there. As you can see, I got it all cleared over over here. Everything else is just neatly tucked away. So um, the only thing that's going to suck if I ever happen to need to replace a fuse, it's going to be a pain because I'm going to pull the seat and this. And um, yep, all I got to do is route some wiring. And because of the camera issues, like I mentioned earlier, there was no time lapse of me putting that together. But for the wiring that's going to go underneath the dash, I will time lapse that. Right now, I'm going to work on routing this power wire. And I'm going to, in the interest of time, I'm going to skip forward a little bit ahead and pull these panels up and just get it laid in place and show you how I, and I'll show you how I did that. So, on to the next one. Okay, so I got some of the power wire routed, as you can see. It's going to snake up and over here. And if you're wondering why this piece isn't off, it's because you have to take off basically the whole back seat. So the easiest thing is just to lift it up. It's just a couple clips. So it snakes through there, goes under the carpet. I'm going to put a couple zip ties right there. And then, let me see if I can do this one handed. Then it goes underneath there, underneath there. And I'm at this point right now. I'm actually quite surprised how huge this wire harness is. So we're gonna keep going up front, up here, and then uh, once we get underneath there, um, I'll bring the video back. I'm gonna tidy this back, put this back together back here, um, just so it's neat and tidy, and so I can close the back door and push the seat back. So, um, catch you in just a second. Okay, so that right there, that is the grommet we're gonna be going through. There we go. Now you can see it. Um, just to, for aid of access, I unbolted the brake fluid reservoir. It's simply, put that back where it was. Um, it's just bolted right here. It's two bolts. Unbolted it, unhooked this harness, moved it out of the way. Uh, quick side note the harness unlatches from the back side. It don't latch us from the back side, not the front, so just so you know. But uh, yeah. Okay, so let's show the wiring. So far, up here, up here, up here. It's going to go behind this junction block. 
up there. And right now it's in the resting position. And then that is the backside of the grommet that we're gonna come through. So I can't do this one-handed. So I gotta put you guys on hold and I'll show that wire. Basically you wanna make a small incision, be very, very careful and route your wiring through. Okay, the fire, the, I'm sorry, the power wire is through the firewall. So you can see it right there, there's the braid of wire. Go around here. There it goes through the grommet, nice and neat. You can't see anything. Even when you look down there, it looks nice and neat. Neatness. Neatness is the, the goal here, people. You got plenty of time, don't rush it. Because you should never have to do this again. So there is the back side. Again, so I'm going to do some terminating really quickly. And then we'll go from there. Okay, so now that all the wires through the firewall, and I figure out where the fuse is going to go, um, had to drill that out a little bit. Up top, and the fuse is going to go right there. And then the rest of the power wire will go in, and it'll be within that magical 18 inches um, that they always kind of like to use. Keep in mind um, that Rocker Fosgate does not have an internal fuse, so I'm using two fuses. Um, one fuse, the one on the hood, is to protect the power cable between the battery and chassis ground going throughout the car and the fuse right next to the amp is obviously protecting the fuse I'm sorry protecting the amp in case there was a short or an, or to keep it from pulling too much amperage so there's actually a uh, I think 60 amp is what they specify from Rocker Fosgate for that particular amp for the fuse there's going to be 120 amp uh, fuse up here and then in the secondary uh, spot there's a 40 amp fuse that will be used later on. So let's get down to the wiring.
so now that side is done it's looking nice and neat here and it's gonna we're gonna have a drip loop right there so if any water gets on it, it'll drip down not flow into the car very important guys make sure you do that and it's gonna mount basically there all the wire will go there and then there we go so I'm gonna start on the other wire right now
uh, most of the underhood wiring is done. Um, I'm not going, I have to move the car, I don't have enough room. So I have to kind of temporarily put stuff back together. But uh, I'm not going to put the fuse in until I'm 100% done under the hood and stuff. So let me get this car moved around so we can run the speaker wires and then we'll go from there. Okay, now I got the car turned around. And now it's time to do the part I'm worried about the most. So, as I mentioned earlier, with all the install accessories I had, um, there's no vehicle specific T harness for this car, at least yet. Um, one of the members on the forum was kind enough to post kind of some diagrams of the uh, factory radio input and it pretty much looks like a standard um, Hyundai harness so I'm hoping fingers crossed that it will work right now I'm just removing all of the body panels and well interior panels fortunately these clips get stuck really easily. Put that in there. There we go. That's the clip I'm talking about. Always pay attention. Make sure your stuff's coming off nicely. Make sure nothing's broken. If it is something's broken, you know, replace it. Don't leave it janky, or at least attempt to fix it. Put this out of the way. Really, the only thing I kind of irritates me is that everything, all of the door seals have to come off to get any of the floor panels off. There's no screws here. That one, we got all the clips. Look at that. It's nice. Set that out of the way. I'm gonna need a light. So this is where the factory head unit lives. Put this down out of the way. There she is. Um, okay. screws. Oh, okay. That was easy. Kind of uneventful. So, oh man. I would really hate to have to solder up in this area. Okay. Oh my goodness. This may work out just the way that I want. Okay, get it out. I mean, there are a lot of connections here. So, let's see if it works. Gotta set you guys down. So that's part of the battle. It definitely fits. Now I gotta put everything back and see if it works. Um, before I hook power up, I know a couple of the speaker wire colors. I'm gonna see if that matches up. 
Okay, so I got the wiring diagram pulled up. So, um, give me a second here. So, these are all of the speaker wires right here. These green ones are the rear one. And it looks like, um, what is this? This should be the rear left. So rear left speaker, rear left hand door speaker should be purple, black, purple, and yellow. And I need to get this isn't the right sort, but this will work. So purple and black, and then purple and yellow. So the rear speaker's right. This is looking pretty good. And then the one right below that is the front left, which should be brown and white, because they're paired up, brown, white. And the next one should be blue. The next speaker below is going to be going to be the gray, so that's going to be rear right, so rear right is purple yellow, well, purple and blue it actually looks like, and then red, interesting, although I do have to look no, 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 no. That's going to be blue and red, which is going to be the passenger front. And that is lined up. Well, that is right. Um, gray, front, right. There we go. Gray and gray should be front right, and that goes to the blue and red. And then there's the purple and orange, and purple and green. Those are the purple ones, which is right rear. Yeah, this seems to correspond. Oh my goodness. And everything else is just all the way through. So, let's hook everything back up with the T-Harness and see how it works. <laughs> You don't understand how happy this makes me guys. I was really dreading having to be underneath the uh, passenger side dash, especially after seeing the room that we had to work with. And this really going to help everyone out. So glad this works. So thankful for Legacy Manufacturers. Who like to keep things simple? Shout out to Hyundai for that. Cause you gotta at least give them a little credit there. Credits due. So as promised, 
we're going to do a lot uh, time lapse of the uh, soldering of the wires, if you will.
Okay, so this is how all of the audio cable is routed. So we start over there at the amp, work our way past the ICCU, kept it nice and tidy towards that frame rail there. It goes under here, and this is just clipped in. Um, it goes behind the B pillar here, and you don't need to take this completely off, just pop it out, it's just like on the other side. Now, it is a little bit harder to run wiring over here because essentially the two audio cables is like having uh, two runs of four gauge wire, but it runs along here, nice and neat and zip tied. Runs up behind a junction box up there, and then they're hanging right there where they need to be behind the radio. I'm gonna get this tidied up, get the um, the infotainment unit back in, and then uh, we can start moving to testing stuff. So here we go. So this is what it looks like with the T-harness stuffed all the way up there. All these are in front of my speaker wire harness. There's all speaker wiring up there. But yeah, that's how it looks. Let's get this head unit back in. Okay, everything's back in. Um, it is a tight fit. I won't lie to you. It's a tight fit without even new wires in it. So just be real careful of your routing. See, I just kept everything smoothed, basically ran it behind this bracket. It's tucked up in there with most of the T-harness. And uh, yeah, um, in terms of connections, you don't have to worry about it. Um, they only Every connection is color-coded and they only go in one spot. So just make sure you get everything plugged in and you'll be good to go. So we're gonna move on to, uh, I'm going to reassemble the interior and get the power hooked up to the amp and then I'm going to tune the amp and then we will I'll put the back seat back in so stay tuned okay so everything's back together except for the rear seat bottom so now we're going to do the Rockford Fosgate clean setup and it's their integrated system into the amplifier to set up the to set the gains and such um, so I loaded all of the test tones from the CD onto a flash drive Got that plugged into the computer. Wow, why did I say computer? I got that plugged into the infotainment system. Um, which is cool. It looks like it'll read WAV files in MP3 too. So, according to this, um, for a full range setup, we're going to go to track 7. Okay. And then essentially, um, once it's playing, can I make this repeat? Yes, so it'll just repeat that. So now that that's going, let's go to uh, the back of the car. So what we're going to do is basically I'm going to increase the volume on the source unit, aka the infotainment system, until, let's see if I can get this set up, um, until it starts to clip, then you back down, and that will basically set your max volume with which it clips. Now, I'm pretty sure... It's around 55 for most things. There's the red light, so we're going to back it down. So it looks like it starts clipping at exactly um, 58. The lights off. Fifty nine. We got clipping. Fifty eight. There's no clipping. So now that that's done. Which, that sounds about right, because most of the distortion that I can hear starts around the 55 to 60 range. And that's unfortunately where I usually have to listen to hear anything. So, um, that was step four. So basically, we're going to adjust the input level until it starts to clip. And then back down.
That's basically where you want it. Do the same thing for the rear channel. Okay, pretty much everything's back in. I'm in the buttoning up stages. So I just wanted to see, show you guys the kind of clearance we had. I mean, I can completely uh, get my hand underneath there. Actually, I can make a fist if I can articulate my wrist, but um, it's tight but spacious, as, the, as weird as that might sound. Um, in case any of you were wondering about it overheating, it won't. Uh, it actually has a couple fans, so if it needs to, uh, and then if it gets past the point where the fans um, can't cool it down, it'll um, it'll start throttling itself. But uh, I think there's plenty of airflow over here, so I'm not worried about it at all. Um, I just got done tuning everything, and it sounds absolutely fantastic. This is exactly what this car needs, and it makes me makes me love it again. It makes me not hate it because the sound system was that terrible to be honest with you so I'm gonna button all this up thanks for sticking to it if you waited to the end look forward to phase three which will include the subwoofer and uh, yeah have a good one guys thanks for watching